You will think that that money is for free. No. Is good for your valuation. As an ex investment banker who worked as an analyst in mergers and acquisitions, today I share with you the three main valuation methods investment bankers use all around the world. First, we'll learn about discounted cash flow analysis, which takes into consideration your future cash flows. Later, we'll discover comparable company analysis, which looks at public companies that are similar to yours. And finally, we'll cover preceding transactions that investigates recent transactions in your industry. Let's unpack each. Discounted cash flow analysis. Discounted cash flow or DCF analysis is where an analyst forecasts your business future cash flow and discounts it back to today using a rate called weighted average cost of capital or WAC. What's WAC? You fund your company's operations by taking on debt and generating equity. You will think that that money is for free. No, it costs money to hold capital and that cost is called WAC. How does capital cost money though? Let's break it down. Companies fund their operations by taking on debt and equity. Both of these cost money. The debt part is quite obvious. When you borrow money, you pay interest. The equity part is rather complex. You can think of cost of equity as the opportunity cost of your company's equity. It's the rate of return a shareholder requires, in theory, in order to compensate them for the risk of investing their money in your company. Cost of equity is important because if the company fails to deliver this expected return, shareholders will simply sell off their shares, which will lead to a decrease in the company's overall valuation. Cost of debt and cost of equity together go into a formula that calculates your cost of capital, that is WAC. A lower WAC is good for your valuation. Analysts use WAC to discount your company's future cash flows to today, which allows them to come up with a value for your company today. It creates a today equivalent value for those future cash flows, which equals to the value of your company. DCF is a complex valuation method, but it pays off as it's one of the most reliable methods to calculate your company's intrinsic value. Next, we have comparable company analysis. If your company has a few publicly trading peers, market valuation of those can cast light on how much your company is possibly worth. For this, investment bankers use multiples. Multiples are the ratios that show a company's revenue metrics against its valuation. Most commonly used multiples are EV to EBITDA, and EV to sales. EV or the enterprise value is the market value of a company. EBITDA is its earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization. EV to EBITDA measures a company's worth in the market as a coefficient of its profits. EV to sales does the same as a coefficient of its sales. In order to evaluate your company by comparing it to its peers, analysts first come up with a list of companies that have a similar set of attributes to your company. These include industry, geography, size in terms of revenue, assets and employees, growth rates and margins and profitability. Analysts then create a table made up of these companies and their multiples. They refine the table by eliminating outliers. They then calculate mean and median values of these multiples, applying these mean and median values to your company's financial indicators, they come up with a value range for your company. For example, let's say the median value for EV to EBITDA from your peers was 5x. Your latest annual EBITDA was $1 million. That means your company calculated against your publicly trading peers is worth $5 million. Comparable company analysis is widely used because the data from publicly trading companies is always available and up to date. This gives analysts a good benchmark to gauge how much your company would be worth if it was out in the market. But it's a challenge to come up with good peers to compare your company with, especially if you're operating in a new industry with not many competitors around. Also, if your listed peers are way too big, established, or profitable than your your company, then the valuation will not be realistic. Finally, we have preceding transactions. Let's say a SaaS business in your industry was recently sold for 2x its revenue. It would give you a good indication for your company's value, right? Investment bankers do the same. Looking at the valuations of companies that have been recently sold in the same industry can give an idea about how much your company is worth. However, this is the least straightforward 
good way to evaluate a company because of three reasons. One, the possibility of finding a recent and relevant transaction in the same industry is pretty low. Two, deal values are often kept a secret. And three, markets can quickly change and even a recent looking transaction could quickly become misleading. These being said, investment bankers always check out preceding transactions because the valuations in there are as real as it can get. Someone literally just paid some amount of money to acquire a similar business. When using preceding transaction methods, analysts calculate multiples, just like in the comparable company analysis that we previously explored. These are usually EV to sales, EV to EBITDA, and EV to EBIT. Then, they find the median values of these multiples. Multiplying these median values with your revenue metrics gives them a valuation. Let's say the median EV to EBITDA of the preceding transactions was four. This means your company is worth four times the latest annual EBITDA. The challenge here is to find out both the deal value and revenue metrics of these companies. Most of these deals involve private companies and private companies are not obliged to share their revenue metrics. So investment bankers dig into newspaper articles, interviews of the CEOs of those companies, etc. to figure out revenue figures such as sales, EBITDA and EBIT. These are three main valuation methods investment bankers use when valuating a company. Mind that if your company is an early stage company such as a startup that doesn't have any revenue yet but has a lot of growth potential, then your potential investors use other methods to come up with a valuation for your startup. I'll make another video about how angel investors and venture capitalists valuate startups especially pre-revenue. That's it for today. Thanks so much for watching this far. If you're interested in taking your finance knowledge to the next level, feel free to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye.